My name is Kevin Layden. I'm the Director of Electrification Programs in Engineering. As uh, oil prices have gone up, gas prices have gone up, uh, really care for the environment, people are really focused on how can I get better fuel economy and how can I reduce my CO2 footprint. Uh, there's a lot of good information out there and there's a lot of information out there that may be not so good and maybe some things that people are really concentrating on that they could give up on and uh, concentrate on some things that they should. Certainly, uh, the faster you fill, it does generate more evaporative type emissions. At the same time, it's such a small percentage that you're really very unlikely to see it on any kind of on-road test. Uh, it, it would be so small, actually deciphering that and actually seeing it in, in your daily driving would be uh, very difficult. At the same time, when you do generate that vapor, we've got what's called onboard refueling vapor recovery in our, our vehicles. That's a carbon canister that actually captures that vapor, and then later uh, in usage, we draw from that ca carbon canister and actually uh, burn those vapors and use it to power the vehicle. So if there's energy that's trying to escape out there, we at Ford Motor Company are really trying to make sure that we capture it and make sure that we use it as efficiently as possible. We've looked for that in the past in, in our fill-ups and our studies and, and have found no, uh, no real benefit to fill them up, filling up in the morning versus filling up in a hot, hot part of the day. One thing that maybe that comes from is you'll see these ozone action days and uh, the government will ask you not to fill up uh, in the heat of the day. And maybe that gets interpreted as you don't want to fill up when it's hot because you're going to get better fuel economy when in fact you're really trying to reduce the smog agents. For Motor Company, our engines are designed to run on regular fuel and have no issues. And generally, that's your most economical point. When you put the premium fuel in, you will get better power and better torque and uh, better fuel economy on some vehicles that are designed to take advantage of that. At the same time, you've got to look at how much more are you spending for that premium fuel versus what kind of efficiency are you getting. Generally, we found that the efficiency improvement is not enough to really wash that out. Anytime you're using the AC, you're using power. Anytime you're using power, the only place that vehicle is going to get it generally is from the gasoline. So that heavy use of the air conditioning is going to really draw down your, uh, your fuel economy for the, until you get the vehicle stabilized. Generally, that your, your uh, air conditioner in a vehicle is sized so that it can really get you comfortable very quickly. That takes a lot of power in many cases. So I, I would recommend uh, parking in the shade. Don't park on the top of the uh, top deck of a, a parking garage. You know, that keeps the vehicle a little more uh, cool. And then that really reduces the amount of fuel that you're going to spend on the climate control. Make sure you check those. That's, that's one of the things we really find a lot of people don't check, and it's a huge impact. All you have to do is take an underinflated tire and feel it after you've driven it. It's very, very hot. Uh, and that shows you that heat is being generated by the fuel being consumed. And we can really see a big impact on your fuel economy. Two, three miles per gallon is, is not outside the realm of an underinflated tire. Generally, the vehicle isn't designed to do that, and you're putting more wear and tear on uh, your shifter, and uh, doing that every time isn't all that convenient. So you can save a little bit of fuel, but it, it's, it's quite, a, uh, quite an intrusive kind of operation. If you're really in uh, maybe New York City traffic where you're stopped for long periods of time, putting it in neutral saves your foot and probably does save some fuel. Uh, there's, we've got technologies in place at Ford Motor Company, things like Start Stop, which is designed while you're in drive and you come to a stop, it, it senses that, it uh, knows where you're at in terms of your, uh, your heating and your, your ventilation con conditions, stops the engine to save fuel economy while still providing cabin comfort through uh, actions that we put in place for an improved heater, as well as the starter's designed to make sure that it delivers a full useful life of strong starts 
and the engine is specially designed so that it starts quickly and that you don't have a perceived uh, hesitation. When you take your foot off the brake, the engine starts and you drive away smoothly. So looking for ways to save uh, fuel at, at, a, at a stoplight or in stop and go traffic, the start-stop system that Ford Motor Company offers is a real good alternative and something that should be investigated. You can, I would say, lose 10, 15% fuel economy just in an aggressive start versus a gentle start. And that really ends, ends up showing up. Additionally, braking smoothly is important no matter what vehicle you drive. If you see a light coming red and you're uh, powering up to it, you're wasting fuel in that acceleration and then a hard stop. And you got to remember what the uh, what you do is you're, you're storing kinetic energy in your vehicle and then with the brakes you're turning it into heat and that's waste. So what you want to do is you want to quit powering as soon as possible and then coast to an, or coast or brake gently to an easy stop. We've designed the vehicles that you can drive without worry of, of uh, durability, reliability and uh, no need to really warm the vehicle up. Now, with the uh, modern technologies, advanced engines, with uh, fuel injection systems running very, very well, even down to minus 40, I would say uh, I'd recommend that if you're really looking for fuel economy, don't warm your vehicle up, uh, start it, and then accelerate gently away, and you're gonna really optimize your fuel economy. Okay, so really what we recommend is you, uh, you concentrate on the good things that uh, really can affect your fuel economy. Uh, brake gently, accelerate gently, Make sure you, uh, you do take advantage of things like uh, reducing uh, your use of air conditioning, uh, setting it a little bit warmer, uh, as well as looking at selecting the right technology. If start-stop technology makes sense for you and the way you drive, really look at selecting that as an option. Hybrids and electric vehicles, as well as things like we, we talked about keeping weight out of the vehicle uh, at Ford Motor Company quite a bit. Uh, select an appropriate size vehicle, and then you don't really need two golf, sets of golf clubs in the back. As well as, you know, that's really the, the, one of the theories behind the EcoBoost technology that we have. Where a four-cylinder engine makes sense, uh, it's boosted, you're not going to be carrying around the, uh, the weight of a, of a V6 or a V8. So things like the Ford Edge that's got a four-cylinder EcoBoost on it. Fantastic performance, doesn't have the weight, reduce the pumping losses. Uh, another example of selecting the right technology. So I think it's, it's really important that we, we look at what we can control, control the right things, and the other myths that are out there, we can, I'm, I'm sure they're going to make come back in a couple years again, but, uh, but let, let's see if we can not pay attention to those.